November 24, 1984, uh, the Saturday evening service. Half of God, we don't have to go to the public and to the world to, to proclaim the righteousness of God. But, beloved, we can live. We can live, and we can be the living epistle of God. We can be the living bearer that God is true. Praise the Lord. You demonstrate. You make known. You are in God's stead. He said, be reconciled to God. You in God's stead can be the pillar of God that stands. You know the building that upholds the or the pillar that upholds the building doesn't have to say a word. It just stands. And Paul wrote to the Ephesians and he said, having done everything to stand, therefore stand. Praise God. He admonished them all of those things, but put on the blessed breastplate of righteousness, have your feet shed with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Praise the Lord. And we are to do that. We are, we are to be clothed in the righteousness of God. We understand that. We've heard that. And finally, he said, having done all to stand, brethren, therefore stand. Praise God. You know the little flock has quite, it may be a hidden in many respects, but you have, you are God's truth in the world that repels darkness. The scripture says you're the light of the world. And I always thought, well, that's good. Let's let our light shine, you know. Let's go parade around town and let our light shine. And if we can get a missionary bus up, let's go do that and let our light shine. But never has it come home to me more as in recent days the fact that if God is in you of a truth, and if the appearing of his Son is taking place in you, you're his light, praise the Lord, without ever having to make your mouth, you know, you don't have to grin, you don't have to tell a funny story, you don't have to do anything. You just let God's light shine through you. Praise the Lord. You just let him be your resurrection. You let him be the resurrection in your life. Hallelujah. Praise God. David said in Psalm 24, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in the holy place? Praise God. He that hath clean hands and a pure heart who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. This has been coming to me also. Because of vanity, because man, uh, Paul said over in, uh, over in Romans, he said, we were subjected to vanity, not willingly. But he said, mankind was subjected to, the, subjected to the vanity that was implanted in them at Adam's transgression. All right? He fell into soullessness, or he fell into the obedience of his soul and the delight of his soul rather than the spirit and the life of God. And he turned himself inwardly and began one who lived for the world materially around him and his own soul self-desires. 
And the scripture tells us, he said, he's not subject, that mind is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. But praise God, beloved, when the Spirit of God came into our lives and set us free from sin and death, we then have the right and the privilege of calling upon God until our soul is entirely liberated and set free from that law of sin and death that reigned and reigns in our members. Praise God. So we have the privilege today of ruling and reigning with Christ. How? By the Spirit of God. We have the right for our soul to be set free from any human desire. We have the right to be set free from any emotional desire that God hasn't given us. You see, when we're fully saved, we're fully saved from any ambition or pride or self the deceitfulness that comes from the riches of what our soulish life can gather unto ourselves. And I started to say that the, the thing that has become so progressively real to me is that Christian, godly people, God's true children are being set free from the pride that beset us at the fall of Adam. Do you know that even as a young Christian, most of the times, and some older Christians, we have so much pride in what we think a Christian ought to be. And so we become very prideful in what sons of God are supposed to be. Do you know that we're only supposed to be the new creature that Christ becomes in us? We don't have to have any kinds of ambitions outside of God at all. Then the scripture aptly says or truthfully says that pride cometh before a fall. A fall of what? A fall away from that pride and back into the security and the purposefulness of the Spirit of God who, the Paul said, who will present us false faultless before his throne. Praise God. Do you know that God himself through the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ is presenting you faultless? Kenneth, he's making you faultless. Not that we're not without fault at present time, but it's God's hope and desire that we will be presented faultless. We won't be suffering because of lack of the knowledge of God, nor the attributes of God. God doesn't want his children to be cut off short or to settle for anything less. Praise the Lord, but he wants us to dwell. Paul, uh, the scripture says, and he will be caught up to God over in Thessalonians, and he says, and the scripture says, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. What do you think that is? That's more than just a physical presence. It's more than just a physical presence to be always present with the Lord. It means that your soul, man, your soul is fully satisfied, made complete, released entirely from the bondages of corruption, praise the Lord, and released into the freedom of that only belongs to God. But you only get that from having gone through the fire, the purging, the, the separation of allowing your soul to be purged, cleansed, saved, if you will, by the brightness of his coming. Hallelujah. You remind that scripture over in Thessalonians says that whom this, this one sitting in the temple of God, saying that he is God, 
Hey, that that isn't that isn't some uh, Mussolini character or Czar of Russia or Pope of Rome. This isn't a person, an individual. This is the spirit. Praise God uh, in mankind. Praise the Lord. It's the spirit of mankind, and it can be a very religious spirit. Praise God. In fact, it could be a combination of any, but Protestantism can be just as much that man of sin as any other individual sitting out here as a, as a Hitler or that type of character. Praise God. He's sitting in the temple of God in this body, if you will, seeing himself as God but with vanity, beloved, and with pride, and with ambition, and with the flaw, flawed character that all goes with that, that pretends himself to be God's son. Praise the Lord. With all the iniquity that has not been dealt with, with all of the vanity, and yet puffed up and raised up, Praise the Lord, and with ambition, and with an anointing, praise the Lord, that makes him to the people to become some great person, and they're popping up all over the land. Praise God. But I thank God that the Lord himself descends, praise the Lord, and by the, he, uh, he destroys him, or he annihilates, he, he eradicates that spirit by the brightness of his coming. Praise the Lord. And if we're experiencing anything and looking to God in these days, we're seeing the brightness of that appearing and the brightness of his coming. Praise the Lord. That's completely dealing with that character in the temple of God. Hallelujah. I may just turn to that scripture for a moment. Second Thessalonians, second chapter. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind nor troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall come not that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts all is called God, or that is worship. Uh, see, uh, most of us, maybe many times, have experienced uh, those things, and we've been uh, sometimes bewildered, bewildered at, at what has come in our midst or we've heard of who were so called godly people and uh, and we wondered and we read about and all of those things and and uh, it, it at times is confusing until God begins to deal with us and settle us down and and uh, hide us away as it were for a period of time until he can begin to bring the consciousness right his law as it were upon our hearts and upon our minds, and beloved, that takes a, an individual dealing of the Lord in our lives. That takes God, by his Spirit, working in us until Christ is revealed, or the truth, the righteousness, the, the flawlessness of the character, the purity, and the love of God through his Son, Jesus Christ, 
No wonder that Paul cried out. He said, I, he said, whom I, in whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. He knew that as long as people were led around or led astray by every wind of doctrine, praise the Lord, and everything that came down the pike that they could not sustain themselves, they would be prey to everything that came along. But thank God in this day and hour there is a word of God into our hearts that's penetrating the depth of us, wherein we shall not be led astray, but we will be fortified and standing, as it were, as a flint, praise God, hygiene, for, for the appearing of the Lord and the dealing of the Lord in our lives, knowing that he who hath called us for this same purpose is able to bring it about, praise God. And and uh, so God's looking at a people today, I believe, in the strength of his son, in the purpose of his son, knowing that, that all of these things must come to pass, but all of these things must be tried, that every river, as it were, uh, is open because the, he's, he's turning it loose. The spirit world is very busy uh, concocting up everything that can be concocted as it were. God's going to let us be tried. He's going to let his people be tried. And they're going to, if they love him, if they love the truth, they're going to settle only for godliness and truth and uprightness. Praise God. And they're not going to uh, take anything that's not coming forth from God. Hallelujah. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Well, we've had ample of that, but I want to tell you that it gets... It gets uh, Sometimes it gets very deceitful, as Dennis was talking a while ago. It gets very deceitful. The higher you get into this consciousness of what God is doing, the more subtle and deceitfulness is the mind of the enemy to divert us away from the full intent and purpose of God. Sometimes it comes... Uh, you know, uh, you really have to try the Spirit. You really have to shut yourself away from God. Sometimes you can't even listen to your own heart. Sometimes you can't listen to your own mind. Sometimes you have to wait upon God and wait upon God and wait upon God because sometimes you want to flee from the situation that God wants you in and you have to resist. You have to resist. And you have to stand and say, God, you're able to keep me. You're able to make me to stand. God, I want you above all else because I want this life fully formed in me. I want no deceitfulness. And you know, our own humanity cries out much of the time too because we want relief from the situation that maybe God has us in at the time. And we'd like to turn aside from it. We'd like an easier way. If I know many times if it was left up to me, it's got to be God's divine intervention at times. Many times if it was left up to me, I would have turned and gone one another way. But yet, deep down within our heart, our heart cries out for the Lord. We want Him. Because you know what? He took you at your word one time when you said, I want you, Lord. I want your ways. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the mystery of iniquity. Iniquity sometimes isn't just black and white. Sometimes it's very obvious. But sometimes iniquity as perversity, as just a little twist. You can just, you can get the word and people can be, and can minister the word and they can just 
get everything about right, and then they'll twist it just a little bit. But do you know how you learn to discern and to measure? Of course, the Scripture says, by the discerning or the exercising of our senses, spiritual senses, beloved, by the exercising of our spiritual senses, praise the Lord, but God gave me a key one time, and he said, you can know that which is not true by that which it seeks to deify. Whether it's me or whether it's some other element, whether it be man made, whether it be man or whether it be another spirit, you'll know what is of the Lord by that which it seeks to glorify or deify. And beloved, if it deifies or if it glorifies other than God and his Son, then you know how to turn away from it. You know that you don't have to receive it, and you know, and of course, the most difficult thing perhaps and has been maybe for God's people along the way is that is that which comes right back to ourselves. You see? It comes right back to ourselves and say, well, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. I'm doing all right. I think I'm right about up there. <laughs> but you know, when God sets us free, we know it's because of him. When God makes us a new creature, beloved, we know that we're born of him. When we walk with God and we realize that we are truly his, then we know that there's no glory for ourselves. And isn't it wonderful, more than words can express, to know that we've been set free and can continue to be set free from that which seeks to glorify ourselves. Praise God. Because he will not give his glory to another. Isn't it wonderful to know that when you're born of God and when you're being birthed of the Lord and formed and grown up and mature in God, that you're a whole new creature in Christ as he builds you up and you don't have to worry about glorifying yourself. You turn all the glory to him. It's good to know that he who formed us for that very same purpose is God. Hallelujah that we didn't do it ourselves. We're not doing it ourselves. Praise the Lord. It's Him. It's the Lord. No wonder we can glorify Him and give Him praise and give Him honor and raise His name and exalt Him and continue to lift Him up because of Him. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that it's not us, aren't you? I'm so glad that we don't have to take the credit for it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm glad that God's responsible for that which he's created. We have the privilege and the awesome responsibility to give our life to God, to let him become our all in all. But it's the power of God that works in us. Hallelujah. Not any works of righteousness, lest we had, could boast about it. It's just God's life. Hallelujah. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. He, he said, the writer says, it's a mystery how that works. And you watch it work for a little while and you see how mysterious it is. I'll be honest with you, in days gone by, Brother Westlake, I haven't been as truly, uh, I want to say, say convinced as I have been in the last couple, three years that I could actually begin to hear God and knew what he was speaking to my heart. 
because I'll be frank with you. In years gone by, I've heard so many things pulling in different directions that I wasn't sure which way God was going for sure. But I'm telling you, he's making the pathway clear. Hallelujah. He's opening up a way that we can walk upon. It's a highway of holiness. It's a highway of truth and uprightness. Hallelujah. Then the wicked shall be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. And that in the original is the, the epiphany of his parousia, or it's the manifestation of his presence. He's destroying that with the manifestation of his presence. Hallelujah. I thank the Lord tonight because of him. Because of him, beloved, we have this priceless privilege and this wonderful, wonderful knowledge and reality of the Lord in our life. Hallelujah. I'm not afraid, are you, that God isn't going to win the victory? I'm not afraid that perversity will prevail. I'm only concerned that us, God's people, stand steadfast for what God wants and that he'll find us worthy. That he'll find us worthy for the unveiling of his son. Hallelujah. We want to stand as ones who are counted worthy for the unveiling of his son in this day that God could work his wondrous works and that we could be presented faultless before his throne. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I would that all people that God would call would find in their heart to say yes to him and for the working of his presence within their lives that all perversity and iniquity might be swallowed up by the fullness of his appearing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.